Three words. Big dick energy. Since re-obtaining Mastered Ultra Instinct, Goku has ruffle stomped Moro, having enough confidence to give the strongest person you've ever faced a Zenzu Bean just to ruffle stomp him again. It's our oh, biggest Chad move from any Shonen protagonist of all time. Like, look at this scene where he lets Moro punch him just to break his arm. What an absolute fucking hero. Now, of course, needless to say, I fucking love this chapter. I love where the arc has gone. So obviously, other Dragon Ball fans hate it. Jokes aside, it seems to be like a 50-50 split between people who absolutely hate this decision, saying it borders on character aggression for Goku, and then those with taste, like myself, Jordan Lee and Revolution, thinking it's the dog's bollocks. Not for one to put words in the mouth or anything, but yeah, it's 2020 and Goku showing mercy to villains and giving them a Zenzu bean is apparently still a topic for debate. <laughs> and you know, I'm being a smarmy bastard, I, I get it. It's not pragmatic, it's dangerous, and it's almost hypocritical because when the show is on the other foot, Goku is very quick to point out, you should finish him now. So today I want to offer another perspective. I want to delve into the philosophy of Goku and his actions in this chapter. And also we'll end the video on a positive note and I'll let you know how you can apply this to your own life. So first of all, we have the character aggression argument. I don't think this is character aggression for Goku. I think it's perfectly in line with his values and his philosophies. And if anything, I actually think it's character development. Put your picture box down and just let me explain. Goku is a totally pure person. And after training with Kami, he doubles down on the respect he has for other living creatures. Since Kami literally means God, there's some meta-narrative there that he has become enlightened. So since then, it's been a pretty well-established thing that Goku gives mercy to his enemies. That can be Tien, Piccolo, Vegeta, Frieza, Cell, Boo, and now even Moro. And what I think is brilliant is that this chapter references so many of Goku's past mercies. So we have Krillin being the unwilling proxy to Goku's mercy. A throwback to the Vegeta arc where Goku asks Krillin to spare him. Now Goku straight up steals the Senzu Bean and gives it to Moro. Secondly, it's the one we all know. Goku throwing a Zenzu to Moro is very reminiscent of Goku throwing a Zenzu to Cell. But this is actually a throwback within a throwback. Back in the World Tournament arc against Piccolo, after Kami tries to kill Piccolo, Goku prevents that and then also gives Piccolo a Zenzu Bean. Cell was basically a legacy villain, being the combination of all the villains that had come previously, as a way for Gohan to ascend past Goku. All the villains here look a bit similar too. And of course, immediately after showing mercy, Moro does the whole Freezer thing uh, on Namek, where Goku gave Freezer his energy and then Freezer immediately betrayed him with it. I haven't read this chapter in Japanese, but I know that Freezer's words to Goku have been translated before as you must die by my hand. It seems to me like it's an obvious throwback. After Goku breaks Moro's arm with pure Chad energy, we have him standing over Moro in the same way that Goku stood over Freezer during ROF. He also powers down from Ultra Instinct in the same way he powered down from Super Saiyan on Namek, with similar dialogue between all three of these scenes, the general gist of it being Goku telling his enemies to come back stronger than before. Moro, of course, gets to become his final form, which is like this weird Ultra Instinct version of Moro who can harvest the entire planet as his body, which is a fucking really unique take for a villain. This is a throwback to Goku always letting the villains obtain their final form, because he doesn't want to just beat them, he wants to destroy their pride. Basically, uh, you either vibe with me, or you get the fuck out. And I really like this bit. There's this moment where Whis looks at Goku and he's like, Goku! I, I'm not doing a Whis impression. Where Whis looks at Goku and tells him, you need to finish this now if you're going to finish it. And uh, Goku has this like immediate like light bulb moment. He says, okay. I'm not sure how many people notice this, but it's pretty reminiscent of the Cell arc where Goku tells Gohan to finish it. So like, my headcanon for this is like Goku realizes that He's a, being an absolute hypocrite and he needs to finish the job right now. And of course, it all, it all goes tits up. The final comparison between 
this, uh, what do you even call it? This arc of Goku's forgiveness, if you will. In When Goku was facing Freezer on Namek, it gave him this really smarmy speech, like, you've reached your limit, your energy's decreasing with every blow, you finally met your match, and he was just the Saiyan. It's like, really smarmy, but the general premise is, everyone has their limit, and this is yours. This contrasts with Goku, in Ultra Instinct, literally saying those words. Everybody has their limit, and you have reached yours. Like, the idea that Toriyama and Toyota are working on this together has somehow led to character regression to Goku. Like, I think there's so much of Goku's character in this chapter alone that's kind of gone unnoticed by the fan base at large, and I think it's really unfair. Like, you can tell that Toyotaro loves this series, and that he's thought of all the past villains and all the times Goku has forgiven his enemies, and he's tried to combine it into this development of Goku's philosophy. Even bringing up last chapter with Mavis asking Goku why he doesn't kill people. And of course, Goku does kill people, he just prefers not to. And I think, when everyone's screaming that Goku should just finish it, shit, he's being stupid, it's dangerous. Like, yeah, it is dangerous, but what's harder to do? When you've got the upper hand, what's easier? Just killing your opponent outright, or trying to convert them onto your side, gain an ally, and convert someone into a martial artist. Obviously, it's easier to just kill someone. And when people will say things like, well, Moro is just too dangerous, keep in mind, like, everyone Goku spared, was too dangerous at some point as well. Like, no one was as strong as Piccolo, no one was as strong as Vegeta, no one was as strong as Frieza, no one was as strong as Cell, though it could be argued that he at least had faith in his son to be stronger than him. And no one was strong as Boo, which, like, he went above and beyond with that level of forgiveness, right? Because not only did he spare the good fat Boo, who Vegeta wanted to kill, he also resurrected the evil Boo as a good guy to give him a second chance. And it's pretty well regarded in the fandom that if Goku did kill these people, then it would have had worse consequences down the road. Like in the SNES game, Super Goku Den 2, there's alternative paths depending on whether or not you spare the villain canonically. So at times in the series where you were meant to spare a villain, so let's say a uh, Piccolo in the World Tournament, you're allowed to kill them instead. So if you don't stop Kami from killing Piccolo, then Raditz will ruffle stomp you and make Gohan into a Saiyan soldier. If you don't let go of Raditz's tail during the Piccolo fight, then Raditz cuts off his tail, kills Goku, and then kills Piccolo. And if you allow Vegeta to be killed by Krillin, then nobody is there to help Gohan and Krillin face Goldo on Namek. So there's this recurring thread throughout the series that mercy doesn't just suit your foe. Who has to serve my- Hey, best buddy! Oh, it's you. And it's wise to make friends, because you just don't know what's around the corner. Like, only Goku, as a protagonist, could get himself into these ridiculous situations. But I think that's absolutely amazing. And this is what I mean by, I believe it to be character progression. Because, okay, yeah, Goku could learn to kill people. But with Vegeta becoming a more Goku-like figure, would it really make sense for Goku to become a more Vegeta-like figure? Like, I always think that if you want pragmatism and mercilessness, you have Vegeta. And there's some arguments to be made that Vegeta's kind of lost some of his edge by becoming more like Goku. So would we really want the same thing for Goku? Personally, I think doubling down on this philosophy of it doesn't matter how much you hurt me, I will just get stronger. I think that has the potential to make such crazy experiences and such crazy fights that it'd be the most creative that Dragon Ball Super has ever been. And speaking of creativity, and this is my next point, I think that everyone wanting Goku to just finish the fight are boring and predictable as fuck. If Goku just ended Moro now, it would have just been an, another arc. So, oh, good job, you've, you've killed the villain. He wasn't that great. Next arc, please. But instead, he did something that was so off the fucking wall, though in character, that it has the entire fan base talking. And it's led to something that has literally never happened before. A literal goat man becoming a planet and mouth lasering Goku <laughs> off his feet in Ultra Instinct. I think that's fucking awesome. And with a new arc more or less confirmed, I think watching Goku do all these fucking amazing acts of mercy that get him into such crazy predictions would be phenomenal storytelling. Like yeah, call me an apologist if you want, but I'd rather be an apologist and actually enjoy the series that I read than be a moaner, piss baby critic over things that you're going to watch anyway. Kind of like Goku, I suppose. 
I think it's way more fulfilling and way less often done to find the enjoyment in everything. The Virgin Critic versus the Chad Apologist. It's so like my predictions going forward for chapter 66 and other people have come out with this too, but I did say at the moment <laughs> the chapter had ended, is that Vegeta is going to do his spirit fission thing. It may or may not resurrect Mirus, but I don't really care. Sorry Mirus. It's gonna separate Moro from the planet and then Goku will wipe him out. And I think that's brilliant because it gives Vegeta just as much adequate time in the spotlight as Goku with Ultra Instinct, where you know, he's learning of his new techniques, and it gives them both the win. Because I know a lot of people were disappointed that Vegeta didn't get the win, and I think this is one way of making us all happy. But then again, it is modern Dragon Ball, which is more contentious, than Trump versus Biden, so you never know. Honestly, let's say I made an outrageous Trump and Biden tweet right now, I would have less of a response than if I said, Goku did nothing wrong. <laughs> but of course, that's just a prediction. Like, I'm not, I don't care if that happens or not. I'm sure it'll be entertaining regardless. And now, our motto in this channel is, of course, be more shonen. So how can you use this philosophy to enrich your own life? I had this talk with a friend once, and she was basically saying that she had to close herself off because she was so scared of anyone hurting her. And that you should be very, very guarded over who you should call a friend. But I basically said to her that, like Goku, I suppose, the bar of entry to becoming my friend is pretty much fucking nothing. Like, as long as we're friendly to each other and we gel and we have some common interests, it's like, boom, you're my friend. And then she said, uh, well, I hope nobody hurts you. And I just think that's really fucking rich. <laughs> like, as if you could get to the age of 30 and never be hurt by anyone. And what I said to her at the time, was it's not about not being hurt by somebody it's about being strong enough to accept when people hurt you and be strong enough to overcome it that way and it's what i said before about being like the chad apologist you just get more out of people movies franchises by being positive and that is the philosophy and the message that i want to give to you don't be so pragmatic and ruthless but you turn away potential friends out of fear. Out of fear that you're going to be hurt. Be so strong and so comfortable in yourself that you can take being hurt and you can still get up. And more than lifting weights, more than having a powerful position in your profession or your job, I think that that's what true strength is. And it just so happens that my favorite character also believes the same thing. And if you can see the positivity in everything, I guarantee you that you will enjoy more series outside of the 10 movies that everyone says that you should like. Your life will be immediately happier and your cock will feel at least 10 times larger. Be like Goku, employ big dick energy, and live your life like a shonen protagonist. My name's Cosplay Mini, and my mission in life is to help a million weebs like myself craft a better life. I want to help bring out the shonen protagonist in you and everyone else that I interact with. Check out my store cosplaymini.com, link in the description, for sick clothes like this shonen as fuck hat and this Android 17 Monster Island Ranger shirt. They also have a free training ebook called the Super Saiyan 6 to help you start your fitness journey. <clears throat> have a nice day guys and always remember, be more shonen.